And the Pasuk continues, Now, we know that in, as a Balkore, in between Parshios, we have Psuchos and Stumos. We have separations between paragraphs and between sections. So in the, right smack in the middle of this pasuk is a uh, separation. Period. And there's a big separation in, if you, if you look in the Nach, if you look in a scroll, the sofer is going to write it with a big separation. So it says when, when, when uh, it was when the entire nation completed crossing the Jordan that the Lord said to Yoshua saying, right? But what is, what is the separation all about? So there is another place in the Tanakh where this occurs. And it's in Parshas Vayishlach, Breshis, Perak Lamed Hay. I'll read it. This is when Yaakov and his family come back after the whole, you know, after being with Lavon, after the Maisa with Esau. And it says, Vayelech Ruven, Vayishkav et Bilha Pilegesh Avi, Vayishma Yisrael, and then there's a Psikta, then there's a, there's a Parsha Stuma, it means there's a big separation, but the Pasuk's not over, and it says, Vayub Neakov Shnei Masar. So, and it says, and now it, it gives me a new, a new Parsha. The children of Yaakov were 12, Bnei Le'ab, Chor Yaakov, Ruben, it lists everybody. So what is going on here? So the, I'm, the Rav Steinsaltz says that whenever you see a paragraph break like that, it indicates that something is missing from the puzzle. Something should have been said or done, but wasn't. So what do we think might be absent here? After the people crossed the Yamsuf, Moshe the Bnei Israel recited the Shira. But here the verse makes no mention of any song. Perhaps this is what the paragraph break signifies. The people should have sung after crossing the Yardin. It's possible that they did not have the opportunity to sing because they had to immediately organize themselves in, into battle and maneuvers for, for Yericho. And maybe they didn't have the Yeshiva Das, the peace of mind for songs and praise. And we can think of other reasons, but that is the reason he gives. Over there, by Yaakov Avinu, why is it split up there? Because there, it doesn't mean that Reuven actually had relations with Yaakov's Pelegish. The Midrashim there tell us that he moved the tent because after Rachel died, Yaakov was living in the tent of Rachel's Pelegish. And, and rather than in the tent of Leah. And that was an insult for Ruvain because Ruvain's mother was Leah. So he moved the tents. But that was uh, inappropriate for a son to get involved in what his father was doing. That's one of the reasons it says Pachas Kamayim, that Ruvain didn't think carefully. So the Bukhar was taken away from him. But yet, the Torah wanted to say, you know, but Reuven is still part of the 12 sons. That's why it's included in the next Pasuk, even though there's a break there, because that Misa finished, and now there's a new Misa. So there's a reason why it was put there. Same as to what's going on here, why there's a separation. Okay. Well, he, uh, he has, here in this one, also, there's a separation after Pasuk Dalek. Yeah, but there's a colon there. Here, there's no marking. That, that, yeah, in a Hanami. That's, what, that's the point. And now comes a, a big separation. Now there's a new parsha, even though it's in the middle of a pasuk. No, but in Dalet, you look at Dalet in the Rubin edition. There's a separation between Bamalona uh, Shetolino Laila, and then separation Vaikra Yeshua Shnei Also Yish. I don't know if that's a stylistic where, where, difference. Where, where are you? Where are you? Dalet, same Perek. Dalet, pasuk oh, Dalet. Dalet. Yeah, there's no separation there. There is, in this Rubin edition, there is. I don't know if that's what I'm saying. Hang on. 
In the Mikros Gedolos, it says there's a Samach, a Stuma. Whereas in the uh, Ruben, Ruben uh, version, there's a uh, space. From Alona Shertalinu Bo Alayla, yeah, of course there's a, there's a separation, but that's the end of a puzzle. We always have separations at the end of a puzzle to describe a new paragraph. Johnny, that's a normal, that's a normal, I'm, Pasuk okay. okay. Aleph is in the middle of a Pasuk. Where did you ever see that before, Johnny? Oh, I, okay, I know, I see what you mean, okay. Where oh, that's a new Pasuk? Yeah. The Malona Shartalia Bo Alayla, that's soft Pasuk, then by Kray it's a new Pasuk, that's Pasuk A. Mm. A Pasuk Dala, that's the next Pasuk. This is one of the only two places in Tanakh where you have this separation in the middle of a Pasuk. Okay, and we described, maybe a, we discussed a possible reason for that. Maybe the people, the children of Israel should have sang a shiva and they did it. Okay, right. Vayom Hashem Yoshua Lemor. Chulachem in Aam, Shnei Masar Anoshim, Ish Echad, Ish Echad Mishabek. Take from the people 12 people. Now, if you remember last week, we, he said the same thing. Says Rashi. He says, yeah, it's the same I mentioned to you before, but now get them ready. So Rashi seems to imply it's the same 12. The Malbim has a different shot. It says, so it's quotes from a Kliyokar. So it's a Machlokas Kliyokar and Rashi, whether this is a new 12 or whether it's the old 12. But Rashi seems to be learning it's the same 12. So, Kulachem, Minaam, take from the people, Shnei Masar Anashim, Ishechad, Ishechad, Vishavet, one purpose for each, from each shape. Vitzavu Otam, command them, lay more, tell them, Sulachem, Nizem, Itoch Hayardeng, take from the Jordan, remember the Jordan is split. Remember, the Kohanim have taken one step into the river on the east bank. They're one step in on the east. The water sparted, and the day Israel has completed crossing. The Kohanim are still standing there with the Aro. The Yardin is, is, is dry. And now these 12 people are told, step into the Yardin, pick up yourselves from the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the feet of the priests are, 12 stones. Right? Take 12 stones. Carry them across with you. And wherever you're going to sleep tonight, now where are they going to sleep tonight? In a place called Gilgal. The first encampment where they ended up is in Gilgal. And that's what it means the place that they're going to sleep tonight, they, those stones should be brought there. Now, we're going to see that those 12 stones had a long travel. It wasn't just that they traveled out of the yard into Gilgal. We'll see in a minute where they went. But anyways, the 12 are told to take 12 stones. Again, Joshua summoned these 12 men who had originally prepared. By Yermelam Yoshua, Ivru, pass, if they are on Hashem, Lokechem, Al Tocha Yarden, Barimulachem, Ish, Evan Achat Al Shichmo, each one of you pick up a stone, put him on your shoulder, Limisfar Shifte Bene Israel. See, first Hashem had to command him what to do, right? By Yom Hashem Al Yoshua, he told them what to, he told Yoshua, Kulachem and Amshnei Masar Nashim. And now, Yoshua is, is following up what Hashem told him to do. Lamanti Azos Os Bekirbechem. And he gives them a reason. Ki Shalun Bnechem Machar Lemor. What does that sound like? Sounds like Haggadah's Pesach. Your children are going to ask you later. Ki Shalun Bnechem Machar Lemor. Right? Very same, very similar language. So here he's given them a reason. What is the answer? The Martin Lahem tell them, He seems to focus on the fact that the Jordan split. Why? 
because the ark. So the focus, what, if your children ask, what are these stones for? It's to remind you of the Aron that split the yard. Now, why? Let's just keep in mind. Why are these stones going to remind them of the yard? Because we're going to see if we're going to quote a pasuk soon from Moshe Rabbeinu. Remember, Moshe Rabbeinu was told in Sefer Dvarim, you're going to take 12 stones. And what are you going to do? You're going to write the Sefer Torah on it. Are these the same stones? Are these the different stones? Keep that in mind. So, one reason Yoshua gives them is to remember the Oral. And now it says, after Yoshua commanded them, he, they listened. They picked up 12 stones from the Jordan that was still dry. They took them with them to the place that they were going to sleep that night. And they placed them there. Now, separate from these 12 stones, Yoshua, he established on his own 12 stones. Now we'll see, did he do that on his own? Was he commanded by Hashem? But now, two, 12 stones are going to be set up in the Jordan itself. Now, is anybody going to see those stones? I mean, the Jordan is going to come back again and, and not going to be split. So those stones will probably be in the Yardane, but we won't see them. Or some will say that maybe they were placed in a way where you could see them. Remember, the Kohanim were standing just a step into the Jordan from the east bank. No Serona breeze. Vayusham, and they will be there to this day. Some, the Abarbanel says that Yoshua set up those 12 stones on his own accord so that they should, one on top of another, so that they should protrude above the water to mark the spot of the miracle. That's what the Abarbanel says. Bernie, didn't we learn that one of the Abarbanel's was to put stones in, in stuff like that? So remember? The... No, that's a, that's a special, that's Merkulis. That's yeah. if you put one Merkulis, one stone and one stone and a third stone on top. That's called, that was like the Mercury. That was the traveler's idolatry. And then people would throw stones at it. But this is, remember Hashem, we're going to read very soon the command that Moshe was given also to put up stones. Hmm. When, we, when we come back and do this more, we'll discuss that. But no, oh, so this here. is, Hashem is told, telling them to do it, so this is not an Avodah The Ernie, Ernie yeah. yes. do, we know, do we know who the 12 people who are carrying the stones were? Did they come no. from the 12 different yeah. Shvatim? We don't, I don't, I didn't find any Midrashim. One from each shevet doesn't say that they were the, the Nasim. But they, were, they oh, were from each different shevet. Each different shevet. Oh, one shot is that they were very strong so they could pick it up. They have to be, you know, they were strong. That, that's how, how big were these stones? Yeah. According to Masech the Sota, by the way, this whole discussion is gone to into depth in Masech the Sota Duff. 34. Ernie, what eventually happens to these stones? Do they join together at the... Hang on. All of these are great questions. I'm just trying to see the similarity. Right now, right now we were told... When Yaakov had the Chalom with the Sulam, it starts saying Evan, it changes the one Evan, it becomes from all 12 separate little stones. Correct. That's going to be... That's right, but there... It's not a matter that they were, Yaakov was not commanded to do that. There, he slept, and each, each rock was competing who was going to be under the tzaddik's Correct. head. So there, there was no the command to do they, it. They, they were actually representing Yaakov's 12 children. Yeah. yeah yes, yes. And but joined into one, B'nai Yisrael, yeah. Okay, okay, just thought about the analogy. Absolutely, absolutely. How big were these stones? Were they're, these we'll see. Big? They were, so by the way, in the Sechta Sota, the 12 selected men were very strong 
and lifted the largest stones they could carry. Okay, so they, they were large stones. Okay. So those Kwanim who were standing on the east bank, they had just stepped in. Remember, they, they, with the Aron, until all this was finished. And then the people passed. Now, what was this that the Hashem had commanded Yoshua to speak to the people? So the Radak says it was the command that Yoshua said to take the stones to the 12 people. That's one shot when it says, Asher Tziva Asam is Yoshua. That's what the Radak says. The Abarbanel say, it refers to Yoshua's instructions regarding the fact that they're going to inherit the land. Because we're going to see very soon, he's going to say some words about the fact that they're going to inherit the land. Or, the Abarbanel says, in, along with the Malbim, about their responsibility, their Aravis, to observe the mitzvahs in Eretz Israel once they go in. And that's shot in why it says, Asher Tziva Moshe Yoshua. Because it connects to the mitzvahs that they have to do. It continues. Vayik Asher Tam Kolam Lavor. The Jewish people finished traveling. Vayavor Awan Hashem Vakanim Lutnei Ha'am. So, the al Sheikh says that they went quickly. They crossed very quickly because they were afraid that the water might overtake them. Or they went quickly because they wanted to fulfill the mitzvah satluya sparets as soon as possible. That's what the Gros says. Or they went quickly as a covet to the ark so wouldn't have to wait so long in the yard then for people to pass. That's what the Mitzvah's David says. So they finished. Now, who goes first? Remember, two and a half tribes are going to, we, 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 we learned that in the last few prokim. Mm -hmm. They're going to live on the east bank of the Jordan. And they were, but they were told they have to go with their brothers to fight. Mm -hmm. So they actually went in front of, they were the vanguard. And they were chamushim. They were armed. Now, why were they the vanguard? Because the other tribes were advancing slowly as they were traveling with their children, livestock, property, and tents. By contrast, Shevet Ruven, God, and Chatzim and had left their families the and the on the eastern side of the Arde. And therefore, they would serve as the vanguard of the army. Very oh. interesting. That's what, that's what Steinsatz explains here. Kasher Diber Moshe. How many? Karbaim elav chalutzei atzava. Just the uh, just them were forty thousand. Avulut nashem lemelchama el arbos yericho to the plains of Yericho, which is the wide expanse that was unsettled and cult and uncultivated that sat right in front of uh, Yericho. In the Chumash, the Arava refers to the Jordan Valley, the area between the Sea of Galilee, right, the Yam Kinneret, and the Yam Amela. The plain of Jericho only forms one section of the Arava. The area immediately west of the bank of the Jordan, opposite Arva Smoa. That's this area of you. Talk about this. That was beautiful. Now, Bayoma who Gidal Hashem is Yoshua. So on that day, Hashem enlarged Yoshua ben Echol Yisrael. Vayiru to Kasher Yiru es Moshe Kol Yemei So. Again, the Steinsatz is a very nice introduction. Although Moshe Rabbeinu had performed miracles in Egypt, at that point the people had not yet observed this command over nature with their own eyes. The first public wonder that Moshe had performed before all of Israel was the splitting of the Yamsuf, when the entire nation stood and some Moshe parted with his staff. Indeed, it is only after that event that the Torah said by Amino Bashem Moshe Avdo. It was only after only after the splitting of the sea that they completely believed in Moshe. 
In a similar manner, this parting of the Jordan revealed Yoshua as a prophet and as a true successor to Moshe, as he demonstrated that he was not bound by the laws of nature. That's what the Radak says. Such displays of power, where Hashem publicly provides a miracle that is synchronized with the actions of a prophet, occurs very rarely with the other prophet. It's Hashem doing this miracle, but Hashem coordinates it with the action of the Navi. And so when Moshe stuck his hand out in the Yamsu spot, that was Hashem forming a miracle at exactly the same time that the Navi's doing it. The same thing we're going to see by Eliyahu by the Carmel. There's a, that was a miraculous that the water came down, fire came down, it ate up the water, it ate up everything. It, again, it's a coincidental activity of Hashem's miracle at the same time to strengthen the power of the Navi. I think that's very, very interesting. Yeah, but but by Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, we know that Nachshon ben Aminadav had to jump into the water, so it wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu. It wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu and Kodesh Baruch Hu. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to split the water, but then Moshe Kodesh Baruch Hu said, you know, do do something, and Nachshon ben Aminadav jumped in. So it wasn't exactly the same as the Navi standing and put his hand over and opened up by 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 Kriyas Yamsu. But it said the specific pasuk that says Moshe not to yod, that Moshe stuck his mate. There's a whole pasuk there by Kriyas Yamsu. Yes. Yeah, so so then why do, we, there, why do we have to have the whole mahalach of Nachshon ben Amiyadav? In a chanami, because that's a different Musar Haske, like we learned last week. Remember the Oron with the with the with the body. That it's not. It's got to be also human human activity along with Hakadosh Baruch Hu to to do it. I think it's the same thing there. That. Uh, you know, they needed Nachshon to start up to his, he had to have a moon on Bitachon. And as, and as it said, Hashem performed the miracle in to sort of strengthen Moshe. And the same thing that that's why it says here that now, Gidal Hashem is Yoshua, by Yeru also. Hashem Yoru is Moshe, So that's one, that's the explain. that's at least how the Radak learns it. Okay. By Yom Hashem Yoshua Lemor. Savet HaKohanim Noseron Haidut. The alumni are game. So now the quantum are told, come out of the Jordan. They brought their uh, the feet of the priests moved to the dry ground. At that moment, by Ashubum and Ayardi Limkoma. The waters came back by El Chukit Moshe Shomal Kogdotav, and then it returned to its place and flowed on all its banks. The Jordan filled up. The waters that had piled high, like we learned last week, came back to dorm. Now, there's a famous medrash that when it says that the Kohanim came back onto dry land, where did they go? Did they walk westward? Did, did they walk westward along following Klai Yisrael and got up on the west side of the bank? No. We're going to learn a medrash that they took a step backwards on the east and, and the water closed and they miraculously, the Oron carried them over the flowing yard into the other side. And we'll see the medrash inside. And we'll try to understand why did that happen and et cetera. And that's why the Pasuk says, oh, yeah. special oh, yeah. word that they came out of the yard into, to, to, that's some of the yeah. Midrashim focusing oh, yeah. on that oh, word. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What day did they travel through the yard then? On the 10th of Nisan. And they camped in Gilgal, which is on the east side of the bank, which was the e but to the east of uh, Yericho. It was the west side of the Jordan, but east of Yericho. Now, So here it says that, that, uh, uh, that they put up these stones in the first place where they encamped, Gilgal. Now, the Steinzelt says like this, Gilgal is not the name of a particular place, but a locality in which people do not establish permanent residence, 
but that locality at that time serves as a camp for national and religious gatherings. The, Chumim, the Tanakh mentions multiple Gilgals in various locations, and archaeological discoveries in the land of Israel have helped identify several Gilgal camps. The precise location of the Yericho Gilgal is unknown. Some identify with a place near Yericho known in Arabic as Jalujia, while others claim it is Der Hajila near the Jordan. So eventually, we're going to come to a place, Gilgal, where the Mishkan is going to remain for 14 years, during the seven years that they battle and seven years that they divide before they move the Mishkan to Shiva. This is not the same Gilgal. It's going to be a different Gilgal. That's what Steinsaus is pointing out to us here. Now, back to the Psuki. What's going on here? We didn't we ask this question before? New, uh, the, uh, uh, he said to Bnei Israel, your children are going to ask again, what are these stones for? Here it seems to be focusing. So he's two answers. We said before the answer there had to do with the Oro. The focus that the arm was what split it. And here it says that the fact that the Jewish people had to walk through the Jordan while it dried up with all this water on either side, it sort of, it shows the fortitude of Kla Yisrael. The same way that Hashem did it at the Yamsu, He did it here. And it's also to show the Ame Aretz, who the, the Canaanite nations, the power of Hashem, Ki Chazakahi, Laman Yeretim, and Hashem Lokechem Kolayamim, and for all of this, you will continue to have fear of HaKadosh Baruch because of the marvelous miracles that he's going to do for you. The kings, the land of the kings now became very concerned about this approaching conquest when they saw these supernatural signs that went along with them. Let's go back a little bit. Um, so I would first like to point out that this isn't the only place regarding the, the, this, the 12 stone business that we learned tonight. In Sefer Shmos, chapter Chav Dalid, By Matan Torah, at the end of Mishpatim, it says, Vaichtov Moshe called the Rashem, Vaishkem Baboker, Vaiven Mizbech Tachataha, Ushtem Esre Matseva, Lishnem Asar Shivte Yisrael. Moses wrote all the words of Hashem. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. So here, Moshe Rabbeinu also, the 12 stones were involved in a an, in an, in an Mizbeach connected to the acceptance of the bris that we had with Klai Yisrael. Now, in, in Malachim, Malachim Aleph, Perak Yud Ches, Pasuk Yit Lamed. So, in, if you remember, in the time of Eliyahu Navi, he was the last Navi Lashem. 
there were 400 Nevi'e HaBaal. They worshipped an idolatry called Baal. And there's a showdown on Hara Carmel. And the 400 Nevi'e HaBaal bring sacrifices and they, he, Eliyahu challenges them. You bring your animals and I'll bring my animals. And we'll see if Hashem brings down a fire. And the Nevi'e HaBaal, they tear at their clothing, they do everything, nothing happens. Finally, uh, when Eliyahu davens, he davened by Mincha time, fire comes down and consumes Eliyahu Novi's uh, Corbin. And everyone says, Hashem Elohim, Hashem Elohim. It was major tshuva by Klai Yisrael at that time. So in part of that process, by Kach Eliyahu Shtein Mitzrei Avanim, Kim Isfar Shiftei Bnei Yaakov, Ashayat Bar Hashem Elav Lemor Yisrael Yeshmech. So there, by Elio, he also takes 12 stones. Also connected the Shvatim, right? Also connected Shift to Yisrael. Now, let's go further. Sefer Dvarim. Perak Habzayin. By Moshe Vizignet Rata Amle Moor. Okay. So this is, they are now, Israel are being told that on the day that you're going to, this is Moshe Rabbein. This is right, this is in, in Parshas Kitovo, right before the brachas on Har Eval, uh, on Grizim and Har Eval. You sh- on that day, when you cross the Jordan, you shall bring put, put up big stones. And so they're told that on the day you cross the Jordan, you're going to write the safe the Torah on twelve stones. Or, yeah, no, but uh, he doesn't say 12. But I'm in the Lord. Vaya Babrahem at the Yarden Takimu Tavanima Ele, Asharachimus of Etchemayon Bahare Val, the Saratau Tambasi, cover it with lime, and you will take those stones to Hareva. Uvanita Sham is Bech Hashem Lokacham is Bech Avanim, Lotanifalem, you build them is Bech there. And you'll put up the law. The Hataftal of Animet called the Rea Torah Zod, the Ere Te. And you shall write the Torah on these stones. So let's look at Sefer Yoshua, our Pasuk, Parsa Gimel. Pasu Gimel. Kimitzvat Mosh Rashi says, Vavartem Otami Machem, that you, the 12 people that were chosen to take the 12 stones, you will take it with you. And what's happening, Rashi tells us, this is like the mitzvah that Hashem was commanded. I just did the Psukim I just read. And listen to this. Before they set up those 12 stones in Gilgal, like we read, they, they detoured. They went through the Jordan. They took it to Hareval. With those stones. Then they folded them up. And they took them back with them, Uvo Volano Bagilga. All of this is Kamosha Shmuel Masek the Soto, the Miro Abani Bagilga was It was a long day. So it was a long day. So it was a long day. And you can see what I what I read about what did Moshe do there with the stones by Matin Tori? He built them his bath. What did Elion Novi do? He built them his bath. What's going on here? He built them his bath. And then they set it up. So there's this, this combination 
of Torah. And what is Mizbech? It's an avoda. That's a little bit of what Walter was saying. Again, so that you need human participation as well as the miraculous participation with the Aro. That's one of the, the, the lessons. And that's why, we, that's why we had two explanations by the questions that the sons, remember we said that the sons are going to ask questions and they were given answers. So I, this I'm reading from Rabbi Hatton for Yerushalayim. We note that this chapter provides two different accountings of the 12 stones, as well as two separate explanations. One set of stones is removed from the waters of the Jordan to be carried by the people to their destination. Another set was placed in the waters of the river to remain there forever. Remember we said Yoshua piled up no. 12 stones on top of each other to remain in the ark. So 12 are going to be schlepped out and taken to Harevall and then back to Gilgal. The other 12 are going to remain in the river. And Yoshua gives two explanations. According to Yoshua's first explanation, the 12 stones are the coron of God's intervention through the vehicle of the Oran Abris. Like we said, you should explain to them that the waters of the Jordan divided before the ark when it passed into the Jordan River. According to his second explanation, the stones don't emphasize the miraculous nature of God's involvement in the splitting, but rather focus upon Israel's fortitude in traversing its waters. Right? It says, when you shall say to your children, Israel traversed this Jordan River on dry land. Taken together, there is a dual message to be communicated by the memorial of the 12 stones, and it addresses the unique spiritual task of the people of Israel. On the one hand, they must have steadfast and unshakable trust in Hashem, rooted to the earth and immovable in anticipation of his salvation. At the very same time, though, they must become the agents of their own deliverance by confidently traversing the waters at their own initiative, demonstrating not only absolute faith in Hashem, but enterprise and effort as well. Twelve stones, the crystallization of Israel's purpose in the world, are placed in the river's raging waters and are left there to remember the ark's miraculous work and their firm faith, but twelve other stones are simultaneously transported to the new land to highlight Israel's own resourcefulness in securing and settling. So Ernie, I think that's say, a nice... Uh, Ernie, Ernie, before that, after Abel, they took the stones and folded them? Well, that means, they, they, yeah, they, they took, the, took them with them. Took it with them. So they not actually physically the folded them. The washing of keep law time is like folded them. How can we write the Torah on them? So do you write the Torah on the languages on the stones? That's what it says. Can you hear me? What happened to most? Yes, we can hear you. What happened to Moshe's what stones? What happened to Moshe's stones? I say? think these are the same stones. Which, which ones? Are, I which think that then, they, then, they, then these are the same stones that they wrote and they put up in Gilgal. And it, it was a lot that... So I saw... No, they're going to be his stones. They were told to pick up from the river. Moshe was just given a command to do it. Right? I read that... But he wrote the Torah on those stones. How can you write the Torah on the well, stone? Uh, Sydney, yes. Moshe is told in Parshas Kitovu, the Hayab Ayom Asher Tavuos Hayarden Ela Aretz Asher Hashanah Kachodotin Lacha, Vakimot Lacha Vanim Dolot Esad Tau Tambasi. The Chazal Kavim Et Kodvei Torah Zot Bovrecha. Moshe is not around when they cross the Jordan. I'm sorry. I think that, and I, and therefore, the these stones, according to many Pshatim, are these same stones that they that they that they did. And where do they write Be'er Be Hetev on them? So, by the way, it's, huh? If the Pasuk and Devarim says that on these stones they wrote Be'er Hetev, they right. wrote the whole Torah in Ain't seven years on us, right? Ain't so Ain't it was all done now. It was all done now. In Gilgal? Yes. It was all done, it was all done now. <laughs> it's got to be Benes, right? I mean, I was going to write all the... All that on, on the stones. It's he writes a magic. Uh, yes. Many, many writers. Yeah, the cryptology. No, not because I, what is it called? Uh, micro. Micro. Micro, that's it. Micro. No. Micro calligraphy. In 70 languages. Wow. So, 
So I'm going to read you from Masech the Sod to Daf Lamed Hay. Nimsei Tata Omer Shlosha Minei Avanim Ayu Echad Shei Ki Moshe Be'eretz Moa. So in Echanami, in Eretz Moab, on the other side, Moshe Rabbeinu also put up stones and wrote the Torah there, Be'eret. Moshe did that as well. Later on, not in Parsha's Kitavo, but to see later on, it describes that Moshe is, is writes on the other side of the yard and leaves stones there. We'll see in a minute why. And now that's the second. Those 12 stones that, that Yoshua put in the yard. And what's the third? So says the Musa on the Vim. The, the stuff that you're going to put west of the Jordan, right? And then the Saratot Tabasi. That means the purpose of writing the Torah on the east side and writing the Torah on the west side, he also explains us, he, he explains like this. On the east side or the west side? On the east side or the west side? Why did Moshe put up, why did he write a Sefer Torah on the stones Just like we're supposed to have mezuzahs on our door. So the, those 12, the Torah that Moshe wrote on the 12 stones that he left, on the east bank of the Jordan, that was like mezuzahs for the two and a half shvatim that are going to live in that, on that side. So we're going to have mezuzahs on the west bank of the Jordan after they cross. That's because that's for the Klai Yisrael, the ten shvatim that are going to live in Klai Yisrael. And they needed mezuzahs on the other side as well. Just like we have rooms within rooms, and each room gets its own mezuzah, that's how the Musa and the Vim explains why there needed to be stones on both sides of the Jordan with the Torah written on it, like a mezuzah. He says the original, because I think that Barbanel says that the stones on Avery Yard on the West Bank served as the first mezuzahs for Israel. But yeah, I don't but think he, he talks. But he about says the, as well. Yeah, I don't think he talks about the ones that Moshe said. Like in Yordea. Right. means the east of the Jordan. Right. 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 And then two and a half tribes there. They had two and a half tribes there. So he says exactly. So the, the, the Torah going in. Are the mezuzahs going in? And, and the ones that were left on the other side were mezuzahs going out. Ernie, one could also say possibly that just like uh, both Moshe Rabbeinu and Yoshua were leaders, uh, this is setting the, the example for all future Malchai Yisrael, the mitzvah of writing your own Sefer Torah. Each Melech had to write a Sefer Torah as well. Okay. So it's like each leader, Moshe and Yoshua. Okay. I mean, eventually, eventually that din is Noye when Klai Yisrael appoints a Melech. And, that, and they, would, they started out, like Shaul and David, they had to start carrying Sefer Torah, one had to always be with them, etc. Right. You don't see that that didn't exist by the Shoftim. Now, Me Moshe, <clears throat> you, give, you give a good point, because both Moshe and Yoshua were considered Melachim. 
So maybe in some part that was the, the way they were the kind of... <clears throat> it, was already, it was already a Pasuk in the Torah, that a Melech has to have a Sefer Torah. Now, I want to focus on Pasuk Yotet. <coughs> it says, V'am alum yarden ba'asor lachodesh arisho. What happened on the 10th of Nisa? What else happened on the 10th of Nisa? Shabbos Agadol. Shabbos Agadol. What happened on Shabbos Agadol? Why is it called Shabbos Agadol? On that day they were commanded to take, It's to Umishchul. So says, says the Yalkut Shimoni, the Amalum and Ayyad in Besor L'Chodesh HaRishon, Om Rav Levi, L'Kichas HaPesach, Om Dalahem B'Yarde, that the Schus, that we took the Pesach, then we, we got the benefit of, here by the yard in the So says, says the Musar Nevi'im, after Loima, Hatan Delkach Asla Mokam Ba'osu Shoa Nesa Zeh, the reason that the miracles happen at the same time, Mishum De Kishavr Sayardim, are a Kosva's Divrei Torah Labonim, Right, they already written the Torah, like we said, on these stones when they crossed. Vaya chashash, kishiru it kol divrei mitzvot sa'elu aktovim if they have, and they're going to see all of these mitzvot, particularly yeah. the mitzvot atluyos for arets that they never had any clue about. Shiyamru shakashi yaleim lekabel otam uvifrat shaz nisrab olam a mitzvot atluyos for arets the all. We learned last week that we now took, took responsibility, Arvus, for our fellow brothers, even for hidden sins, not just the Niglos. They might have in mind, boy, this is going to be really difficult to keep this story. Shalom, come are you on the stream? Shalom, Aram. Oh, El Aram, no, say it's no so. Oh, I'm sorry. This is on. I'm sorry. I I didn't re, I read you from so I didn't read you from Sota yet. When it says in Pesuk Yudzayin, Vayitzav Yoshua Tekonim Lemor Alum and Ayarde, Vayikalot Tekonim Lo Tzemer Nidav. Nidik Kukavar Ogle Tekonim Machavar Yoshua Adam Kol. Nim Tzo Aram Benos Ekwani Mitzare Achad. When they stepped out of the yard, and they were on one side of the yard, and Yisrael Mitzad Echad, Noso Aronis Noso. So the, the Chazal tell us that the Aron carried the Kanim over the river. Shenemar Vayik Asher Tam Kolav Lavor Vayabor Aron Hashem of Kanim of Nehab. And that's what he, why he says that this nace occurred. Why did they need to see the Kanim with the flying with the Aron over the Jordan? Mm -hmm. He says because they would they would have read all this Torah now on the stones. And now they would have Chalisha Sadas. They would think, oh, we can't keep this Torah. So now they saw that we don't need Kohanim to schlep the Aron. El Aron Ose Esnosa. The Aron carries us. The Zerukia Torah Mosefes Kochot Chadashtim Lemisha Noseota. The Torah gives power to people that schlep the Torah, that learn the Torah. So it's a nice, nice void. It, it, it means by seeing the Oron carrying the Kohanim flying over the Jordan, after the Jewish them. people saw this Torah and they said, oh my God, are we going to be able to keep this? They said, yes, Hashem's going to help you keep the Torah just like we see that the Oron schleps the Kohanim over the Jordan. And then what I said about the 10th uh, the of Nisan, says the Musar Nevi'im, when Klai Yisrael, now what animal did the Egyptians worship as Avodazar? They worshiped the sheep. So Klai Yisrael, in front of the eyes of the Mitzrim, had to take a sheep and tie them to the beds, and then the Egyptians knew that they were going to slaughter it. They were, the Egyptians were ready to kill all the Jews. Somebody does a mitzvah without really putting his soul into it. So that's Dover TV. 
that's a natural thing. People are going to put their heart and soul in the mitzvah. But they are So if you do your, if you perform your mitzvahs without the serious nefesh, so the schar, you, that's a natural way of doing things. The reward you're going to get is going to be a natural reward. But if a person gives up his life for the mitzvah, that's an unusual thing. Nature is for a person to protect himself from danger. Because of the reward that they were ready to die by taking the sheep in front of the Egyptians, it was the Sirish Nefesh. That was the schus, and that's the connection. So I want to close tonight's year with people are learning Torah, looking at everybody gathering all the time. It's been a serious nefesh. So we need to get out of this whole COVID business. We should have it very, very soon. We should do all our mitzvahs has been a serious nefesh because we see that's how we can get uh, treated also in the Malam and Ateva. Amen. Anybody else Amen. have any comments? Any other comments about anything that I said or anything, any other contributions that somebody thought of? They, 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 they have comments on any of the things or they agree? They Harold, agree. Harold, you wanted to tell us something. Mark just stopped you. You want to tell us something? Yeah, let's hear what Harold wants. She used to make an appointment with Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.